Good morning, everyone. Archbishop Richard Gagnon here. This is our Friday morning report for December the 10th, 2021, and blessed Advent to all of you. I'm speaking to you from my office at the Catholic Center in downtown Winnipeg. Thank you very much for joining us. And so this morning's report will cut, touch upon a few items in the Archdiocese. Well, I guess more nationally than in the Archdiocese itself. Uh, first of all, as you heard in the media through reading and through listening and watching television that the long awaited for delegation has been postponed. And that's primarily because of the international problems caused by the uh, virus. Uh, for example, uh, Italy uh, has now been upgraded to level four uh, on this scale that they use uh, in the European Economic Community, or European Union rather. And that means that there are new restrictions in terms of travel. And so when we think about the delegation composed of elders and residential school survivors uh, and youth and others, um, the age of uh, many of these uh, delegates that were to engage the Holy Father in a, uh, a personal encounter, three separate encounters for First Nations, for Métis, and for, uh, uh, for Inuit uh, people, uh, it presents particular problems. And so there was a lot of consultation among the Indigenous people themselves. I've, I have participated uh, in a couple of those and uh, along with the bishops as well. And um, a mutual agreement was arrived at that it would be perhaps uh, risky and uh, perhaps unsafe for some of the uh, delegates to attempt to go to uh, Italy international traveling at this time. Uh, the variants are continue to be somewhat troubling and uh, the Omicron variant uh, still, uh, there's more to know and learn about that and it's still very much in the news. And so in these discussions, of course, at the same time, uh, right now, uh, the president of the CCCB and the vice president of the CCCB and the uh, general secretary are in Rome because every year there is what they call a presidential visit where the president will visit the Holy Father and the various dicasteries of the Holy See that deal with different subjects. And so as developments in Canada were developing, uh, the Holy See has been kept informed and, uh, and they are supportive of these plans. Um, <clears throat> we should realize that the Holy Father himself uh, has uh, a particular um, awareness of the problems uh, caused by the virus. He has done what he can to ensure safety at the Vatican. He's supported in Europe in general various measures to mitigate the virus. As a matter of fact, this past week we celebrated on Wednesday the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. And I know in Rome there is a very large gathering of people every year at the Spanish Steps in Rome where there is a uh, statue of Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception on a high pillar. And it's a very popular devotion every year. The Holy Father canceled it because of the difficulties of the virus. So, so the delegation, long awaited, has been postponed. And um, certainly uh, disappointing, but postponement is not cancellation. Just a couple of thoughts about this, I think, by way of encouragement. I, I think that uh, there's a growing awareness among people uh, among the indigenous groups, uh, certain, certainly among bishops and others, that the project, let's call it a project, of this encounter with the Holy Father uh, is being seen more and more as, as kind of ushering in and beginning a new era of relationship between the Catholic Church and indigenous people. It has been said that way in public this past week and uh, that's very encouraging as we're beginning to understand that engagement dialogue is very important in any kind of relationship and certainly between uh, the Catholic Church, the churches, the Catholic churches in Canada and the indigenous peoples. Um, 
the spirit of mutual consultation also is very encouraging. Uh, this project goes back over three years, and there has been a continual uh, mutual dialogue and consultation about the this idea of a delegation. And even with the decision to cancel, not, not cancel, rather, to postpone, that process has been a mutual engagement between the Indigenous people themselves and the bishops, and indeed of the Holy See. And as I said before, these decisions in Canada have not been taken in isolation from the Holy See, but they have also involved at a distance uh, the Holy See being aware of what's going on and lending support to this idea of a, um, of a delegation and postponing it to, let us say, hopefully this spring. Hopefully that will be able to be determined. Dates have to be determined with regards to that. And I think, too, I think we need to look at this uh, whole question of this delegation as part of a larger process. And what is that larger process? Well, reconciliation in general is the larger process, but also it is an important step uh, prior to an eventual papal visit in Canada. So it, it is an important thing, and uh, it is beginning to be seen as such. And that's very encouraging, because a lot of hard work has gone into this. As I mentioned before, uh, over three years, and it's been very challenging, I must say. It hasn't always been easy, this process, because we've had to learn to work together, and there's been many issues in Canada and so on. So it's been challenging, but then again, it, it has been three years full of God's rewards and good things happening uh, at the dialogue level. And uh, I would call it historic. It's a very historic reality. And we thank God for that. This is the second uh, postponement. Um, and again, it is out of our control. There's a saying that uh, it goes something like this. Uh, we are done with the virus, but the virus is not done with us. And so we are getting tired of the uh, coronavirus, the variants, of course. It weighs us down. Uh, so we're kind of done with it, really, in many ways, but it's not done with us yet, and it affects us in many ways, and the delegation is an example of that. So uh, that's all I'd like to share with you about the, uh, the postponement of the delegation, and uh, stay tuned for further information regarding that. So this Sunday uh, is the third Sunday of Advent, when we're marching towards Christmas quite quickly. We call this Sunday Gaudete Sunday, Gaudete um, Gaudete means rejoice. It comes from the entrance antiphon to the Mass. Every Mass has an antiphon. It's a scriptural verse uh, that precedes the Mass. If, if a hymn is sung, the verse is not read. But it's a scriptural verse, an antiphon. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Gaudete in Domini Sempre. And, uh, and so that gives a theme. We're close to Christmas, and so the vestments now move from violet, which is the color of Advent, to what I would call rose, which is a little moment of joy, uh, just like when St. Elizabeth met Mary, both women being pregnant, Elizabeth with John the Baptist, Mary with our blessed Lord, and how the child leapt in the womb of St. Elizabeth. A little leap there, a little leap of joy. And Gaudete Sunday is very much like that. It's the 12th of December this Sunday, Gaudete Sunday. And what day is that? Well, that's a great day in the Americas. It's the feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And if you don't know much about Our Lady of Guadalupe, why not look it up? Uh, we can do that nowadays. If you believe everything you read on the internet, I don't know. But nevertheless, lots of information on Our Lady of Guadalupe. Guadalupe is a spot in New Mexico City, actually. Mary appeared in the form of an Aztec girl. And her appearance is full of symbols, Advent symbols, as something important is going to come. The good news of Jesus Christ. And Juan Diego, the Aztec man, was privileged with seeing these apparitions. Saint Juan Diego now, also an Aztec. Um, you know, he is that person that brought the news to the local bishop, and the rest is history. And Mary asked that a church be built on the spot where she appeared. If you go there today, there are 
Almost 10 million people a year visit Guadalupe and Mexico City. It's a very inspiring place to visit. So Our Lady of Guadalupe, December the 12th, is also declared by the bishops in Canada as a national day of prayer in solidarity with Indigenous people. So we do this every year since 2002. And there's a message that goes out every year with regards to this National Day of Prayer in Solidarity with Indigenous People. Uh, this year, uh, that uh, theme of the letter from the Canadian Catholic Indigenous Council uh, is the following. We, the body of Christ, are called to live in friendship and harmony with all peoples. We are brothers and sisters of our one Creator God. God gives everything to all of us. God creates and sustains the wonderful diversity of peoples, cultures, races, and creeds. And so the theme is pray for healing, pray for forgiveness, and pray for reconciliation. So do not forget that this Sunday, prayer moves mountains. It really does. <clears throat> You'll find on our website the letter from the Canadian Catholic Indigenous Council this year, do read that and to help inform yourself about those questions in Canada. It's obvious that the Indigenous questions are important in Canada because we all live in the same, the same country, we live together, and we have to learn to, to live together in relationship. Uh, on our website, as a matter of fact, in the home page, uh, you'll find uh, at the very top of the website a category there, Reconciliation. If you go there, you'll find a whole bunch of things, a whole bunch of material, much of it coming from the Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops on the theme of reconciliation. There are videos there, information about residential schools. Do read that. That's a good source that you can rely on for information because there's a lot of misinformation out there. And, and so the CCCB has done a service. Do refer to that, read it, and you'll find yourself uh, uh, more and more informed about that historical reality of the residential school legacy and what the church is doing now. Thank you very much. Now, we had only one question this past week, but uh, I don't think in the short time that we have together that I can properly answer it. The person asked the question uh, simply about... Um, what does the Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops do? Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to challenge you, whoever that person is who wrote that letter, uh, to go to the CCCB website yourself. Have a look at it. You'll see on that website a whole gamut of activities that they do, that, that, that the CCCB does. And then maybe next week I'll, I'll add a few things to that in terms of perspectives. The Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops is a conference of bishops. It's a conference of churches. It's a conference of Catholic churches. It is an office, an agency that relies completely on the bishops of Canada to give the bishops a national perspective as opposed to, to just simply the local church perspective. And so the commissions and the councils and the various agencies um, are all connected with that. Uh, as it is not a head office of the church. It is an agency that allows the individual bishops to have a national perspective and a national voice. But I will certainly say more about that next, uh, next week in our Friday report. So thank you very much for joining us this uh, Friday. I hope that Lent, is, uh, that not Lent, but Advent is going well for you as we approach Christmas. May God keep you in his peace, keep you safe on these days, during these days where we are living through rather historic times. The Lord be with you all. May he keep you and protect you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.